I spent 10 days on Fred Olsen's Aurora cruise as an onboard astronomer, and it was absolutely amazing. And yes, of course we saw the Northern Lights. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, I'll be talking about my trip to the Arctic Circle in search of the Aurora Borealis as a cruise astronomer. This is your sign to book an Aurora cruise, so let's begin. So my trip began in Coventry, it's my home sweet home, and on the day that we were actually set to go, the Midlands, the region where I live, was hit with a massive snowstorm. The universe was giving us a taste of what's to come. I picked up my friend Kat in Birmingham, and together we set off to the port of Newcastle in North Shields. It was just a four hour drive. Kat and I did our PhDs together at the University of Birmingham, but she was two years above me, and also I couldn't rely on her for anything astronomy. She wouldn't know the difference between Capella and Polaris. Now, her expertise is in gravitational waves, which would come in handy, however, when we get asked all the questions about black holes. For example, what would happen if the sun turned into a black hole? Well, absolutely nothing, of course. Sure, there would be no sun anymore, we'd be in pretty much the dark, but we'd still continue orbiting around the black hole like nothing happened. We wouldn't get sucked in. Anyway, we arrived at the port bang on time at 1pm and I dropped Kat off with bags before dropping my car off in a nearby car park that I paid for. It was about a quarter of the cost of parking at the port, and it was just a short 10 minute walk away, so no brainer. Now, even though we do check in at 1 pm, the boat doesn't actually leave until 5 pm later that day. That's because everyone else has to check in too. The staggered check in really helps with the efficiency and gives us time to check out the entire ship, which is massive. The, so the ship I'm on is the Fred Olsen cruise. Fred Olsen has three ships on its fleet, Ballet, Borealis and Balmoral. All of these ships are considered smaller than your typical cruise liners, like the Royal Caribbean for example. We were on the Balmoral, the smallest ship in the fleet, which they argue smaller is better, and it really is in this case when you're navigating through the fjords of Norway. On our smaller ship, with just 1,325 standard occupancy, I was also able to get to know all of the passengers and staff really well. Everyone was super lovely. My first mission was the briefing meeting, so I was one of two onboard astronomers through Go Stargazing. It's an organisation that coordinates stargazing events across the UK. I first met Neil, the founder, after being invited to give a talk at one of the events at Twice Brewed Inn up in the Dark Sky region of Northumberland. I've since given several talks for them and even collaborated on a few YouTube videos as well. So when Neil asked me if I wanted to go on a free cruise, of course I jumped on the opportunity. When I get to the briefing meeting, I'm met by the entertainment and deputy entertainment managers, and of course a glass of kava. And along with the rest of the entertainers on board, we go through the timetable for the cruise. For me, that's an introduction to the night sky talk, an aurora talk, and then four stargazing evenings, each 45 minutes long. I don't get paid to do the cruise, and I'm still working on board doing my research, but a few stargazing nights for a free 10-day cruise for two seems like a pretty good deal to me. Hey, who doesn't want to be an astronomer? Oh wait, I also had to do two lunches, so guests could pay to have lunch with me and my spots were completely sold out, what can I say? Our ship had 11 decks, a spa with two outdoor pools and four jacuzzis. I made it out several nights despite the minus four degrees Celsius temperature, and it's only the getting out that's really hard. There are many restaurants on board, the main dining included the buffet in the Palms Cafe, which we spent most of our time in. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, where they served an amazing selection of cakes and scones, and also midnight snacks, 
all those fried goodies like chips and chicken wings, perfect for after stargazing. The tea, coffee, juices were unlimited and available 24 seven in this area, but actually the soda and wine were billed separately. Thankfully, I also got a small daily credit allowance to cover this and the internet. They have Starlink on board all of the ships. Starlink is Elon Musk's satellite-based internet. It's a huge headache for astronomers usually. Their bright reflections contaminate our astronomical imaging. But of course, it's for the good of the world, providing high-speed internet across even the most remote of places like the fjords. And to be fair on him, he has changed their materials to make them less reflective and changed their orbits so they're less of a problem for astronomers. It is a bit expensive though at about £12 per day, but I was working from home, so I had no other option. And generally it was okay for the few work calls that I took. The food on board was really nice too. There's an option to dine in a fancier Ballandock restaurant, but the food is pretty much the same with the exception that you get the service and so also have to pay the tip. For us though, if you wanted to use the fancy restaurant, we needed to book through the maitre d' and we did this for two of the formal nights on board. On formal nights, everyone dresses in their best ball gowns, black ties, super fancy. We head to the Neptune Lounge where a main events take place for the captain's party. The captain and the crew come in and make some words. Don't ask me who's driving the ship. There's also canopies and drinks and it was just lovely, not to be missed. So, a day in the life of an onboard cruise astronomer. I get up at my usual 6 a.m., head to the gym. The fitness facilities are fully equipped with treadmills, rowing machines, weights, the lot, with the most amazing view. It was stunning. But you only get to see it when the light's out because otherwise the blinds are drawn. Back to the cabin then for a quick shower and then I get to check my emails before heading to the Palms Cafe for breakfast at 8.30. It's buffet, and if you're not careful, it's easy to put on weight. There's so much available, everything you could think of. And whilst we're away, the cleaners have cleaned our rooms. Usually I head up to the observatory. Now this is my favorite spot with panoramic views of the fjords to start my work, catching up with emails, doing reading, doing writing. Back to the restaurant at lunch and then if I don't have a talk, I'll usually do more work in the room. I'll have a quick meeting with our deputy entertainment manager before scones for afternoon tea and then dinner break up my day. There were four port stops in total, Molde, Tromso, Alta and Alizond. And if we're at port, there are several tours running. I volunteered for a few myself, which meant I got to go for free. And these included visiting the native Sami people with their reindeer herds, coming up the cable cars in Tromso and kayaking in the canals and sea of Alizond. The cruise passes the Arctic Circle. Now, this is an imaginary line of latitude that circles the Earth at about 66 degrees north. And it marks the southernmost latitude where the sun doesn't set on the summer solstice and it doesn't rise on the winter solstice. Now, this is a particularly great reason to choose Norway for stargazing and aurora. The nights are just endless, literally. Whilst passing the mark, everyone runs up to the deck to see it and later in the evening, there is a crossing the Arctic Circle ceremony where the crew get completely doused in water. So funny. In the evenings, I also prefer to work in the observatory. I love the atmosphere up there. I love the piano music um, over the singing that you get in the other restaurants. But the evenings are when it tends to get tricky because that's when the passengers tend to get quite chatty. So often I don't get much done, but it's really nice that everyone is super interested in what I do and what I have to say. At 10.30 p.m., if I have a stargazing session, I'll be up on the top deck with my laser pointer. We got a few clear nights and it's so dark out there on the oceans away from all the light pollution of humans, you can even see the Milky Way. 
We saw the aurora four times, visible to our naked eyes. But I can't stress how important it is to let your eyes adjust because it takes about 30 minutes for your eyes to see well in the dark. And if you don't see this, you may be like many of the other passengers on board, just seeing white instead of the intricate colors, the greens, the reds, the purples. What's really great about the cruise too is that there's a Aurora TV channel on the TV that you have in your room. You have to leave it on all night and when Aurora is spotted on the bridge, it will play music and notify you to get on deck. There's also replays of my talks on there too, which is great. In addition to all of the astronomy on board, there are whale watchers, orca, and a load of entertainers doing all different kinds of things. Panto shows, musicians, bands, singers. There was yoga, there was painting. There was never a dull moment on board. And honestly, I had such a good time. I didn't want to come home. I'll be doing another cruise as an onboard astronomer with Fred Olsen to the Azores in July and then I'll be doing an Aurora one to Norway with my good friend Will Chung in October. I'll link them both down below in case you're curious. You may also notice that I have on my new Christmas jumper now available on my website but that's all I have time for this week so Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.